Great, welcome back. So in the last two videos, we've covered extracting quotes and scores via the Darwin Info API. And so far in this series, we've been implementing functionality, calling endpoints, writing code to prepare ourselves for writing more meaningful things later, such as strategies, research, things like that. So we've, we've arrived at this point whereby we're now able to authenticate seamlessly the moment we launch, a, the moment we initialize a class. Everything's happening in the background. We've so far written one base class, and that's for the Darwin Info API through which we get our quotes and scores. So let's take a break today from uh, developing more functionality, going into the API console, and let's uh, make things a little more interesting. Let's uh, do something whereby we access quotes, uh, for this demonstration, we access quotes for a series of Darwins and we evaluate them statistically. We run some sort of analysis on them. Now, we haven't developed any functionality um, in previous tutorials so far to achieve that easily or in, a, in an organized fashion. So for today's tutorial, what we've done is we're going to expand our project. So far in the project, you've noticed that we've developed the API, auth, config, minions, miscellaneous uh, root structures, inside of which we're adding uh, files as uh, as is necessary. Today, we've added another root directory called research. And inside that, uh, it's still a work in progress, obviously, but the mature part of that is the indicator section that we've started and will be demonstrating today. And again, all of these are just examples, meaningful tutorialized examples for you to build off of. You don't have to follow this structure at all. This is purely to give you an idea of what to do if you're stuck or haven't started somewhere and would like some assistance getting there. Today, we've built this research root directory inside of which we've added an indicators directory inside of which we have ML and TA um, for machine learning and technical analysis, respectively. We're going to develop code into these directories as we continue developing more indicators and research tools as we go on. But for today, what we're going to do is first establish, again, the same base class subclass structure so we can build things in organized object oriented fashion going forwards. And when we get an idea, therefore, in future, we don't want to have to re-implement base functionality. We should have uh, the ability to do so without having to engineer all that code again. So in that spirit, I've written a DWX indicator base class here inside the indicators folder in research that accepts four parameters, four arguments, a name, a data set in the form of underscore data, an algo, which is essentially a function, and a function that could be custom or stock. So for instance, you could have a library such as TALib, and you want to feed in some indicators such as RSI or CCI, et cetera, moving averages, et cetera. You could pass that function to this algo parameter along with parameters you want to execute for that function. And the base class calculate function over here will essentially execute that function with your provided arguments, allowing you to spend a lot less time having to write indicator execution code and a lot more time dealing with the results and doing something meaningful with them. Now, you could, of course, uh, override this calculate function and insert your own logic. So for today's tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how all of this works by creating a base class of our indicator called Hurst indicator. And this will essentially calculate the Hurst exponent on a downloaded quote series for any given list of Darwin's. And if you don't know what the Hurst exponent is, then proceed to the Darwin X blog where exactly on 9th of July, 2017, uh, well over two years ago, we wrote a post on mean reversion tests. And in that post, we focused on three statistical tests in particular. The Hurst exponent that allows you to extract the state of a time series in for in the form of persistence, anti-persistence, or complete random walk going nowhere in nature. Uh, the Hurst exponent is normalized between 0 and 1. And as we discussed in this blog post, any value that is above 0 0.5 is considered trending or persistent. And any value that's below 0 0.5 is considered mean reverting. Any value that is exactly 0 0.5, that time series is considered uh, as resembling behavior of a geometric random walk, as in it's fairly impractical to attempt predicting anything out of it. So what we're going to do for this test is we're going to develop an indicator that rolls over windows of data for a given quote set um, of your provided list of Darwin's 
and creates a distribution, um, a time series of a rolling Hirsch exponent behavior to model the states that the Darwin may be in. And what is the logic behind this? This is essentially a statistical indicator that we're developing here for demonstrating how to do something with quote time series once you've downloaded them. And the idea is to visualize over time, mean reverting, random walk, and persistent trending phases that a Darwin or group of Darwins may go through. And this uh, is grounds for research that you could build on top of and create a lot more complex or a lot more meaningful analyses based off of this, just the Hurst exponent indicator. And this is just one indicator of thousands of possibilities that you could apply, uh, be they statistical or purely technically driven, such as technical analysis tools, etc. To build the Hurst indicator, we're going to create a subclass called Hurst indicator, initialize it. So it inherits everything from DWX indicator, which currently doesn't have anything other than a stock function for calculate and four parameters uh, for arguments that are assigned as class variables. In future, of course, this will grow as we come up with more ideas to implement in tutorials. And as you come up with more ideas and tell us about them via YouTube comments or emailing us at info at darwinx.com, whatever you fancy, if you have an idea, share it, open an, an issue ticket on our GitHub repository or elsewhere, but do share your ideas if you don't consider them as proprietary information that could result in your super duper strategy that you just came up with getting out in the open. So, But if it's not that, do share it with us so we can um, demonstrate it in videos and talk about it and possibly come up with something meaningful out of it for everybody's benefit. To implement the Hearst indicator, we're going to pass in the compute underscore hc function, which is part of the Hurst package, the Hurst module. So from Hurst, import compute underscore hc, pass it as your algo function so it can get executed. If no data is provided, complain that no data has been provided and we can't do anything. In the calculate function, we're simply creating uh, a list for ourselves to store the Hurst exponent values and we're iterating over the provided data for Darwin underscore data will hold quote values for Darwin, as you'll see shortly in our implementation. And we're passing it the uh, logarithmic series of those quotes. We're passing in the kind parameter, which computer underscore HC expects, which will set to price in our implementation and simplified set to true. And that's it. That's our very simple custom indicator done in exactly 38 lines of code, including obsessive commenting uh, and um, explaining and spacing, etc. So. We'll go over to our test underscore Hurst portfolio, which is the implementation of this indicator class. And inside here, all we're doing is invoking the Darwin Info API, creating a class variable and storing that object in it so we can call it to retrieve Darwin's. And we're opening up a little dictionary object here for us to store Darwin data frames in later. Um, not to bore you with all the nitty gritty detail of the code, which you can of course see on GitHub once this file is uploaded after this video is published. But what we're doing is essentially looping through the list of Darwins provided to the run function in our implementation. We're getting historical quotes for each Darwin. We are then running the Hearst indicator on the quote data for that Darwin. We're getting the results back and storing them in a new column called Hearst. We're then iterating through the Hearst exponent values that have been received from the indicator. We're initializing a state of zero to mean everything is a random walk. We then iterate through the Hearst exponent values and anywhere we find a value that is greater than our upper threshold, as we specify in the arguments, I've specified 0 0.3 as the lower threshold and 0 0.7 as the upper threshold, um, to add in a state variable that we won't be using in this demonstration any further, but we will be using in future when we try to come up with a trading strategy based on this. So that's why these three things are over here. Uh, for this demonstration, this state scenario will essentially model uh, a graphic for us. This graphics states will be used in future when we develop a sample trading strategy. And that's pretty much it. So we are getting quotes, we are passing them to the Hearst indicator. We're getting the Hearst exponent values out. We're establishing states that we aren't going to use today in this tutorial, but we will in future tutorials when developing a trading strategy for the purposes of inferring when to execute a particular condition. Um, and that's it. Once we're done with this, we're going to plot the results 
we're going to plot the Hirsch exponent itself. We're going to plot two lines for the upper and lower thresholds that we've identified and established in our code. Uh, we're going to plot the quote series, the states, as well as the rolling 21 day volatility of returns on the Darwin, not the quotes themselves. So to do that, we essentially execute dot PCT underscore change on the quotes. And then we roll 21 days for this 21 day volatility stat and get the STD values into a matplotlib chart. And that's it. For this particular demonstration, we're going to take three sample Darwins. This is not investment advice in any shape or form. These are purely three randomly chosen Darwins, NTI, KVL, and ERQ for the purposes of demonstrating this example. The main execution code creates our test Hirsch portfolio class that initializes all the code we saw earlier on and runs it. Uh, the run function is then executed on this list of Darwins that we've created over here. And for each Darwin in that list of Darwins, we then plot the results that were generated through the Hurst indicator class. And that's it. So first, let's restart our kernel to get rid of everything and start afresh. Shift it over here as the graphics will be slightly larger than the size of this console for the moment. Run the script. The main function's already been identified in there, so we should have the script executing the defaults I specified earlier. We'll now pull each and every Darwin in NTI, KVL, and ERQ in this case into our environment, calculate the Hurst values, and start plotting the charts for each Darwin. And this is essentially what we wanted to cover today, not just extracting a particular feature from the Darwin API itself, but leveraging the quote data we receive and analyzing it in meaningful ways. You could apply statistical indicators to this. You could conduct factor analysis and research. You could apply technical indicators to your time series and come up with execution signals. You could model any number of processes and analytics on the Darwin time series with just quotes alone. And we haven't gotten to the scores yet. So in future tutorials, we'll be covering quotes and scores together in a singular portfolio and coming up with use cases on what you can do in those scenarios when you have both quotes and scores to deal with and you'd like to come up with conditioned logic uh, to create use cases for those. For instance, you'd like a trading strategy that buys or sells based on some variation of scores. You'd like to create custom filters. You'd like to create custom filters based on custom indicators that you implement in Python or another programming language. Uh, you'd like to use stock technical analysis indicators to come up with some sort of um, not only a visual for a portfolio of Darwin's or a singular Darwin on its own, etc. There are plenty of use cases that you can employ. But in today's tutorial, we wanted to cover this material. Uh, how to extract quotes and scores was done in prior tutorials. We created ourselves a base indicator class that is, is extensible. We then created a Hurst indicator a subclass that inherits everything in the indicator base class. We overrid the calculate function with our own logic for executing the Hurst exponent calculation. We then created ourselves a client sort of class here, test Hurst portfolio that runs the logic, the logic being get quotes, apply Hurst indicator to quotes, set states based on Hurst exponent values received, and plot Hurst exponent quotes, states, and 21-day rolling volatility on a matplotlib chart. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.